You are listening to GHP Radio, powered by iTrackRadio.com, your independent music source. Fresh, new music, right here on the all-new GHP Radio, your new independent music source. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Ooh, oh, oh, yeah. The fragrance of a candle, the sweetest of wine. I feel it so divine There's no place I'd rather be Just the thought of you next to me A thrill consumes me through and through I want to tell the world and make you my boo
carry so much on your shoulder It's time to show you what a real love is Forget the past, baby, let's move forward I can give you what you're missing Push you toward your vision I just wanna be a team That's just who I am Gotta show you what I'm Thank you on a ride where love was born. Who 
pretty girl All you need is a little romance Just put your hands in my hands I'll take you on the ride to the land of smiles No need to worry cause the lives that I'm carrying Is gonna cross so many ladies Pray to bad I'm busy with the one and only one I'm called B, B, I'm in my wife B, hey, I'm in y'all, tell the ladies I ain't no player, no hater Not a fighter, better lover like MJ said Let me take you on a ride with love Yeah. 
is all about the love.
You are listening to GHP Radio, powered by iTrackRadio.com, your independent music source. Fresh new music, right here on the all new GHP Radio, your new independent music source.
Welcome, welcome to this edition of the Indie Live Spot. Glad you can tune in, be with us today. We have a great guest today. You just got through hearing some great music from uh, this gentleman. Uh, we're gonna hit, you're going to hear some more later on in this show as well. But uh, that was uh, a really nice track there. That was called uh, You Ought to Be in Movies. And, uh, and there's more to this. This is off of his uh, Exposures, I think. Is that right, Glenn? Yes, it is Spogius. Yeah, man. So welcome to the show. Glenn Gordon is in the house, y'all. <laughs> Thank you very hey, much. Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Yeah, man. Welcome to the show. Great, great, great to hear your music. Music sounds great. Great to have you on the show today, man. Um, and everything. Just want to welcome you. And uh, yeah, just welcome to the show, man. How you doing today? I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. And I'm glad for this opportunity. You know, I don't get a chance to come on here and be with good people like yourself so i'm very grateful to be here awesome 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 well i know you have a lot lots of uh a lot of stuff to tell us about uh today it's going to be great uh because you have you have a um a background that's uh, very interesting um you know we heard a little bit of it off off air and uh and mm -hmm. man it's just wow just really really cool yeah i thought we were in the interview already <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah we definitely welcome you and uh uh and so right i guess for starters uh this uh this music of yours uh this exposures uh so is this a um is this your is this a debut or is this something that like you have a collection already um of your music. Well, I did. I did a song called "I I Can't Live Like This." I recorded that song back in uh, about two thousand one, two thousand two or so. Mm -hmm. And I did that one. I did that one track as a single first. That was my debut. Oh, and then uh, uh, later on, I had several other songs that I just didn't know where to go put it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, at and at that time, I was just getting involved with a, a new band because my the gentleman that was helping me before, shall I say my brother that was helping me before, that's when the Iraq war and everything was going on and he was still in the military. So they took him back, they sent him to, to Iraq. So I was in limbo, didn't know what to do. Mm. And then uh, from the grace of God, I was able to get some guys together and we became real tight and real close and stuff. So when we went back into the studio, mm -hmm. we decided that we would uh, put that song called I Can't Live Like This on the track with, with the other songs we had. and since it would be my first time trying to release a, a whole album, a whole CD, so we decided, well, we'll call it Exposures mm -hmm. because uh, it's, a, it's a different type of a blend of, of what I'm used to doing. Mm -hmm. when, I'm, when I'm doing cover music, I'm doing a little of everything. But being that uh, my music, my personal music, seems to be a little bit, new, be a little bit uh, unique, as most people say. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, we'll introduce it as being Exposures mm -hmm. as something. Mm -hmm. Very nice. nice. Yeah, very nice. And uh, yeah, I want to uh, send a shout out. Thank you to uh, Miss uh, Colleen Keithley. She's the one that actually brought uh, you okay. to my attention very at the first of all. 
Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned her because I'd like to give a shout out to as well because that is such a lovely lady. I mean, she stayed on the phone with me. I mean, she stayed on the internet with me for hours. I mean, she just hit me from out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. She heard my music and it's all of a sudden she just started talking to me and talking to me. Said, I got this guy I definitely need to introduce you to. I want to get you in contact with her. Yeah. I am so grateful to her. I'm very, I'm very grateful to her. Way to go, Colleen. Yeah, hey, yeah, she's actually listening. She's in the chat room right now uh, with mm-hmm. uh, with all our yeah, friends. she is listening. Uh, so we we really she don't she don't miss a show. I'm the, I tell you, she she told me. I mean, she really she really jumped on and helped me out a lot. I'm I'm extremely grateful to her. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, great. We all look forward to seeing her, mm-hmm. and and she monitors several music groups and and supports. So yeah. We really appreciate you, Colleen. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. But can I ask you a question? The title of the track we just heard, You Ought to Be in Movies. Tell me <laughs> what <came> about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's funny you say that. It's just that, uh, you know, old school guys, you know, we have a tendency. You remember that old show you used to come on called it Living Color? <laughs> what did it say? Yeah. This happened, you know. I wrote a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's kind of like how I felt. A young lady that I was, you know, called myself dating, you know, and I was all in gun hole and we were great and everything. I'm good to go. And next thing I know, she's talking to somebody else. I'm like, Yo, okay, all right, so I see how this picture goes, you know. <laughs> I say, So you gonna play me like that, you know, you ought to be in movies, you know, because you break people's hearts in the movies. That's for free. Yeah. You know, they, no, not, nobody won't condemn you for that. But you broke my heart. You know, you broke my heart. So, you know, that, that's a different story. So, so I just say you ought to be in the movies, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Because that, that was drama, uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <It's sad. laughs> so I'm tracks, um, I heard Gary talking about it. So, uh, is this part of a, an album contra- uh, uh, project? That is. Yeah, well, you know, but for me, uh, you know, I know some people when they write material, they try to write it to fit a certain genre. But to me, I write just what I feel. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I started off uh, actually doing a jazz song after I Can't Live Like This. That was my first uh, song I ever, uh, first song I put out, that is. Not the first one I ever done, but it was the first one I put out. And right. I Can't This was my debut song. But when I was sitting, but when I was sitting playing with my bass, I actually started off playing uh, jazz. And then as I was playing, something else popped into my head, and <laughs> I changed the bass. I, pay, I changed the bass line because I was thinking about something else. And next thing I know, some lyrics just popped into my head. So I created another vocal song. And as time went on, it is going back and forth like that. I do a vocal, then I come back and I do a jazz. I do a vocal, I come back and do a jazz. So uh, I ended up with about four tracks of vocal, two tracks of uh, of uh, <sighs> instrumental, and then uh, put it all together and just created a created an album, put it together like that. Okay, and that's exposure, right? That's exposure. Cause it, and I, and that's, that's where the name came from as well, because there's not no one set style on the, on, on, on the, on the CD. Mm-hmm. It's, Jazz it sound like blues. It may sound like whatever, you know. So, so, so I just call it exposures of all oh, my oh, so yeah. That, that's why I titled one of my CDs "Many Colors." Right, right. Because there was variety on that. So. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Did exactly. anyone ever tell you you can't do that? You have to stick to one genre, or you know, you didn't do it, and that's okay because I'm there mm-hmm. too. But. Does someone ever tell you that in this industry, if you don't stick to one genre, you're not going to make it? That's why I learned. That's why I had to educate myself about an indie label because I've been told that all the time. They were telling me that, well, we can't play your music because, it, you know, we don't know where it fits. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know where to put you. I said, well, that's okay. I just make my own CD. I make my own CD. And I get on my own label, and then I just put it because you got over seven. You got over seven billion people in this country. In this world. Right. Oh, Seven billion people. You can't tell me that somebody out there won't like something that you do. Right. Right. Somebody's gonna like that. I mean, a, a lot of stuff ahead. That I might even, God forbid, but a lot of stuff ahead. I might say, "Oh, that sounds like noise to me." But come to find out, <laughs> it has sold two, three hundred thousand copies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so somebody like it. So. 
Yeah. So, so I just go, I go, I go based on what I feel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, That's I love true. the track, and I love your voice too. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very How long have you been singing? To tell you the truth, I started off singing in the church about four years old, and I, and I never forget. I remember my first song I ever sung was "Yes, Jesus Loves Me." Go ahead, and sing it. Told me so. <laughs> that was my very first song. Like, go ahead, that, was sing first, it. That, that was my first introduction to to being a solo artist. You know, <laughs> I came up. So I had I had three brothers that sung at, at, at uh, uh, gospel and music when I was coming up as a kid, and they sung on radio every every Sunday at ten thirty in the on every school. My uncle uh, had a radio station that. Uh, that they, they will go down to the radio station every Sunday about 10 30 on Sunday morning and sing. But I was too little to sing with them at the time, you know, like, and my, one of my brothers, he, he passed away, he drowned when I was singing with him. Mm-hmm. So I always, in my mind, I always compared myself as being like the Jackson Five. There was like Michael, Michael, he was so small that they didn't want him singing with the group. And I felt that's how my brothers felt. I, I was so small that they didn't want me singing with them, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, so when my brother stopped singing, I stuck with it, and uh, I stuck with it because I, I I felt that you know I could have been good too if they'd allowed me to sing with them, mm-hmm. but they quit singing, so I kept going to say, see, see, if y'all let me sing, look what could happen. <laughs> so, right. so, so so that's that's why I stuck with it. So nice. wake up, man. Is Max sleeping I'm already? Right. Already? No, 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 no. Oh my goodness, we're not even 30 minutes into the show yet. He's already out. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I saw I saw him dozing a little bit earlier and I, I was just like, okay, we're gonna watch this. We're gonna see we're gonna see what <laughs> Okay, then Matt, go ahead. Ask your question. Yeah, I know right. you got a question. Well, you know, like I said, we was talking behind uh, behind the scenes there. We was talking about how he got really involved in everything that he's doing for his um, for his music, though. You know, rigging and you know, staging and doing the whole nine yards. You know, we talked about that. Maybe you can let the uh, audience know yeah. that, uh, what you was doing. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you asked that question, Mag, because I tell you, like, I'm so energetic and I'm and I'm so you know eager to want to teach a lot of musicians out there and singers. You know, don't give up on your dream just because you know it's not happening for you right now. But you got to do something that's going that's going to be complimentary to you. Why you do that? Because if I stuck with those other type of jobs that I've been doing, it were pulling me further and further and further away from my dreams. Mm. So you can do something in, in cohesiveness, in, 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 in conjunction with what you know, your, your, your dream is about, and keep going. Yeah. And I was, I was just blessed to be uh, introduced to this. I had no idea this type of stuff had exists. And I guarantee you, there's a lot of musicians and stuff out there don't know that this exists. Right. You, can, you can get into this industry working behind the scenes, making 25, 30 bucks an hour, working this type of work, mm-hmm. working what we call minis and what we call by minis that means you may go in and do a job it may be a four hour mini but you only work an hour but they still got to pay you for four hours mm-hmm. and you may depend on what part of the country that you in you might go work a job for two three hours or hour but it, but where you from like say in vegas or someplace out there i think with it that mini is like eight hour mini i think if i'm not mistaken it might be eight or six hour mini mm-hmm. well you might go in there with an hour and a half but they're still going to pay you for six to eight hours that's some good money, especially if you're getting paid 35, 40 bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. And right. sometimes you're making more than that. So that gave me the opportunity to not only stay with my music, but it, it gave me an opportunity to start two other businesses because I was able to, to make good money and still be able to play to play my music. So that that so that term called starving musician, I'm not I'm not a starving musician anymore. I can make a little money. I mean, I'm not a rich musician right now, but I can make a little money. And still do what I love doing most, and that's my music. If you got a regular nine to five and trying to do music, that's going to be a tough. That's going to be a a tough road to climb. But you get behind the scenes, like what I did. Get into this industry I'm in. Become a rigger. Become a stagehand. Become a lighting guy. Become a forklift operator. Become a climber. Become a rigger. Become a steel. You can do any of those things behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, you can do any of those things, and also meet great people in the industry. Why you do that? That's going to compliment you. And what you're trying to do, and I'm so ex- 
as you can see how energetic I get about it, because mm -hmm. I've met so many wonderful people in this industry. My biggest fans right now, you believe it or not, but my biggest fans right now is my co-workers, the people who I work with, the people who I, I climb steel with, mm -hmm. built, built stages with, uh, a rig with, operate forklifts with. Those are my biggest fans. Yeah, <laughs> see? Mm -hmm. so, so, You're so, so, building. So, yeah, so I mean, so, so these musicians out here, you do not have to be a starving musician anymore. Go find one of the local unions out there and learn mm -hmm. how to get behind the scenes and learn how to be a stagehand and build some stuff and, and be close to what you want, what you want to do best. And that's music. And you can, right. earn a, you can earn a decent living and learn this industry. And perhaps, and perhaps one day be sitting here where I am today, like speaking with you guys. Now you created um, a study and it's on your website where they want to learn how to be a rigger. Yes, I was I was I was encouraged to do that. I had a I had a, a friend of mine which was my supervisor and, and and like he was like a brother to me. So I, when I talk about him, I ref, I like to refer to him more like a brother than anything cuz that's just how close we were. He was a gentleman who brought me into the industry, allowed me to become a rigger, show what I, what I can do and all that kind of stuff and uh he introduced me to all the major tour riggers, the major tour riggers who set up all the major shows throughout the world. And these major riggers come to find out a lot of these tour riggers, these riggers, they're actually ex-military themselves. Wow. You know? And when they found out that I was ex-military, and most of the time I work on a job, I always had a shirt on that says Vietnam era veteran. So they know I was a veteran also. <laughs> they love the way I work. So they love the way I work. So they, they encouraged me with, with, with my brother which i i referred to his name was andy but i referred to him as brother as my brother but andy would encourage me to try and teach other people because because they loved the way i worked and was so dedicated to what i was doing and then he introduced me to all the other tour riggers and, 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 that. and when they introduced me to all those other tour riggers they encouraged me to put a training course together mm -hmm. and when i put the training course together Oh my God! But, but believe it or not, though, I got more people in Japan and China <laughs> and Canada taking my training course than people in America is. Hmm. Oh, yeah, because it's an online training course. But but I got people in those, I got people in those countries taking the course more than than here. And I primarily put that course together to try to help my first to help my my veterans. I wanted to make sure my veterans had a decent job making that transition from the right. military. To, yeah, I wanted to make sure they had a decent job to, to do this. But I also wanted to help my fellow uh, other civilians and co-workers to learn this business. And uh, I tell you, it, it helped a lot of people with their music because now they can still do their music and they can still do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Question, mm -hmm. question, question. Um, Go ahead. Now you got this on your website. Are you getting paid for teaching them this? Have you wrote a book on this? Uh, because there's nothing out there about rigging and all that, you know, doing stages. Well, well, I have I have one of my friends named uh, I got a friend of mine named uh, uh, Kenny Bonwell. He does the stage hand. So Kenny Bonwell, he created a course to teach people how to become very good stage hand, and, and this is an awesome young man too. So he does that. When I came along, there was no course for teaching people how to do rigging. And and, and, it, and it's just like anything. You can uh, teach somebody how to become a truck driver. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a lot of things involved in being a truck driver. But you're not trying to teach somebody how to build an engine in the truck. You just want to teach them how to drive the truck. <laughs> so so, you, know, so mm -hmm. you got to know how to get in and get the meat of what needs to be done to accomplish the task. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's no training course that was available. But what helped me out? is that all those tour riggers saw what I was doing. And those tour riggers were so appreciative of what I was doing. So if you go to my website, you see pictures of me with almost every tour rigger that there is. And some of the tour riggers like what I did so well until they even give it to their own sons and daughters mm -hmm. to learn how to, mm -hmm. how to become a rigger based on my skills, based on what I taught them. Mm -hmm. But I, all I did was taught them my military background as a drill sergeant. I just taught them step by step and how to do what to, how, how to do what a, a rigger does, but but also keep safety first. And uh, yeah, right. and, the course, and the course is on my line. It is on my website, Mac. It's called groundrigging101.com. 
You go to groundrigging101.com. It's a two-hour course there. It's two hours. They teach you step by step. And I really sincerely, I really sincerely encourage every individual out there who call himself a struggling musician right now, whether you're male or female, learn something about being in the industry behind the scenes. Stay as close as you can to the industry. Mm -hmm. Stay as close as you can to the industry. Hug the industry. Learn what they're doing in the background. And that's going to encourage you to keep going forward. But as further you're away from the industry, you, you, you're going you're gonna to lose your... You can lose your focus and you can be depressed and you're not going to want to do it. You shouldn't be right. in position these days. You You'll get a corporate it. job <laughs> and you, from corporate nine to five job with no time yeah, to spend on your music. Forget that corporate nine to five. That's not, that's not, that's not built for you as a musician. Or no, a it's not. No, it's not. Seriously. If you want to learn how to, uh, if you want to have, uh, make a good living while you, while you pursue your music industry, Get your job behind the scenes in the industry. Mm -hmm. right. the That's industry. good advice. I did it for 22 years. Now, <laughs> you mentioned off the air that before you were creative and working in the industry in this capacity, that you were homeless, right? I was homeless oh. three different times. Oh, wow. I was up to see the thing of it is, I was homeless three different times, but I didn't have to be homeless because the only thing I had to do was go out there and get that 95. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I could yeah. I didn't have to be homeless. I can go get a nine to five just like that. But the problem was that if I got in the nine, if I went out there and got the nine to five, I know for a fact I lost my focus and lose my interest in what I really want to do in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the, the bottom line is is that there are only so many hours in a day, and you got to spend some time to sleep. You got to spend time to travel. You got to spend time to feed yourself. You got to spend time to, to work in somebody else's job. You know. And, and, and clean the best yourself. Hours, <laughs> it's like, the best hours, the best hours of the day, you got to get to that nine to five. You got to be there eight or nine o'clock in the morning to at least four or five in the afternoon. When you gonna have enough time to do what you need to do for yourself? True. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you got to find something that's comfortable to help you pursue what you really want to do in life. But be realistic now. You can't get this job where you're trying to have a. I want to have. I want to drive this Mercedes, and I want to have this 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 big house. You can't. You got to prioritize what you do. I prioritized what I did. I stayed in a small apartment and rode a bicycle until I got my stuff together. Mm -hmm. The things and then when things prosper, then I prosper. But at the same time, I had a job that I was behind the scenes running every single day. What does a promoter in the music industry do? Mm -hmm. what, what does a what does a production manager do? Mm -hmm. How do they sound check? Mm -hmm. Who sets up the back line? Let me ask you something. Do they fall asleep when they're doing <laughs> <laughs> like like somebody we know over here? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> See it, Dad. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> See it took him a lot of you to catch it. <laughs> well, I call it. Uh, I, I was trying to get to you before you got real deep and you fell out of the <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> I had to intervene there, but now that I have, uh, what are some of the uh, artists? You mentioned it to us off the air, but uh, tell the listeners when you were doing, uh, what is it called, tour rigging? Uh -huh. and what some of the names of the artists that you did some tour rigging for, if I phrase that correctly? <laughs> well, well, I, I'm actually what you call a, a local rigger. So when you come to my hometown or wherever I'm at, we are considered local rigger when you don't do a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. You work stationary. Okay. Uh, you might just work a few few jobs uh, within a couple of hundred miles from where your, where your base but is. But some of the but, artists? You know, because you mentioned some, I want them to hear. Because you mentioned one, it took seven days to set up this. Uh, oh yeah, we do. We we did shows like Beyonce and and and, and, T and Taylor Swift. Those shows are like six to seven days with three three hundred fifty people mm -hmm. to set those shows up, because these are major shows, and they bring in. I mean, they bring in stuff that's unbelievable, and 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 this is the thing that really gets you. You looking at it, it takes six seven days to set this show up, and it take three or four days to take it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes you can base. Sometimes you can gauge it on how long it takes to put a show in. You can look at that being at least half that time to take it out. You know, so if it takes you like say seven days to put it in, it takes you about three and a half days to four days to take it out. So and 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 you got seats at a Beyonce show. Or some of these shows, the nosebleed seats, the nosebleed seats in the back might cost you 
five hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Right. The bottom of your stage costs you like three thousand dollars. That's standing room only. Mm. Mm. Ain't no sitting down. That's standing room only. So, right. Uh, and, and and when you're in this industry, see that's that's the wonderful thing about this industry. You as a songwriter, singer, musician, you get an opportunity to learn so much because you get an opportunity to set up for all all sorts of musicians and all, all and all kind of genres. Mm -hmm. I mean, from rock to you. I mean, I, when I before I got behind the scenes setting this stuff up, I didn't even know how much I like rock music. Mm -hmm. I know. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know that because I didn't because I didn't know who was singing the music first of all. Right. And second of all. I didn't know the I didn't know the name of these these songs and stuff, and I never heard enough from that artist to know that oh you made that song right. Mm -hmm. So I learned from the from setting up these shows for the for the Motley Crue and and yeah. for the and for the uh, uh, Moby's and all these all these different type of guys and right. Lynn Travis and and and, there was, and and all these country singers I set up for you mm -hmm. know and then then you set up for Lana Richie. Mm -hmm. Then you set up for Taylor Swift. Uh, uh, uh. Then you set up for Sade. Uh, you know, right. so, so so you can't name an artist out there in my 22 years that I can't not honestly say you can't name an artist out there in 22 years. I can almost say I I, I kind of practically like almost set up for almost all of them. See, and and before I got into this interest of setting up for them, I started off setting up all the Tyler Perry shows mm -hmm. before Tyler Perry even got to be who Tyler Perry is today. Yeah, I was. Setting those are oh eight ten man crew back there pushing these big set pieces around now he can just push a button and get it to go around but before that we were <laughs> yeah. we okay pushing his pushing his set pieces around wow but, but but i'm saying all that to say i'm saying all that to say if you truly are an artist or a singer or a musician or whatever you got to stay closer to your craft you can't work a nine to five and and and, and think you're gonna make it in in your craft mm -hmm. see so you got to stay close to your craft. I, I was just blessed that somebody pulled my coattails and said, hey, man, over here is where you need to be. I didn't find that out not until I was in my mid-40s. I wish somebody pulled my coattail when I was like in my 20s, but, not, but it's never too late. Never I know, too late. Right? Mm -hmm. they pull my, I'm here now, and that's why I made that training course in order to help some help somebody out there. You know, get out there and, and do it for yourself. If you don't take my training course, take 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 Kenny take Kenny Barnwell training course. He got a stage hand course out there. It'll help you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. nice of you to do that. You you were mentioning that uh, more people out of the U.S. are taking your course than within the U.S. Yeah, it's uh, kind of sad to say. I mean, I, I, and, and I made it for us, but <laughs> but uh, yeah. the, the people in other other countries they like they they're taking it like crazy. But what about music in other countries? Let's talk about music. This is about your course. But do you think people in other countries appreciate us more than the uh, people than you know the United States? I know one hundred percent that they do. I, <laughs> okay. I, I spent. I, I did two tours in Germany uh, when I was in the military. And when I got over to when I got to Germany, remember the song called "When a Man Loves a Woman"? Mm -hmm. Of course. Like almost, I'm like, I mean, at least about almost twenty years old or something. Like, the people still re, re, they revered that song like it was the number one song. Yep. I mean, they love old school music. They do. When, <laughs> when I when I got interviewed, my publicist. Uh, and I gotta give a shout out to my publicist. My publicist Desiree Benson. Oh my God, Desiree. This oh, she's in the chat. Absolutely phenomenal. Hey. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. Desiree, Desiree, that's that's she she's my god in life. This, this young lady is a lot for me. She got me involved and had been interviewed by a young lady named uh, Amani. Amani speaks, and Amani's out of the UK. Amani told her. Me that she said, mm -hmm. "Gigi, they love your music over here, and they love your music in Canada. I mean, they love you. I mean, they love your music in Africa." Mm -hmm. I don't seem to get that same type of love right here, right now. <laughs> but see, what's like the block that, here? What's I the mean, block here that we can't get that same kind of love? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Amani, she loved my music so much over in the UK. She interviewed me twice already, mm -hmm. and and now, and now she got me scheduled to be interviewed again. She's telling she telling Desiree she wants to interview me again. But Desiree is such a Desiree is such a, 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 a I mean, she's a trailblazer. She just, oh, awesome. she's a trailblazer. 
Mm-hmm. Shout out to Desiree. Yes, yes. she's in the chat. I don't know if you heard me say that. Yeah. 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 She's listening. She's listening. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we were talking a little earlier about uh, you had an offer to go to Japan. And yeah. I told you the reason why I think you should go. You know, and, you know, since you keep putting it off, you know, you might as well go ahead and do the thing. I'm uh, making you know it like what? that. I'm telling you, Mac, you you really sparked a, sparked something in me, and I think I'm gonna take that advice because, and and once again, as I said, Desiree the Trailblazer, it's because mm-hmm. of her that I got that connection. It's right. Because of That's I got what it's about. Mm-hmm. And I got and I got to speak with the gentleman, and the gentleman, uh, he's a he's a wonderful he's a wonderful man too. And for my, if I'm not mistaken, I think he owned two clubs in Japan. And he told me, he wow. said, come over. He said, yes, you can come to my club. He said, you can come here and perform at my club. And I mean, uh, so I've, I've been given that opportunity. After talking with Mac, I'm going to have to talk to my publicist. I'm going to have to talk to Desiree and say, hey, you know, I think, well, I, think I, might take, I might want to take him up on that. She got you the hookup, so take advantage of it. Yeah, she got me the hookup, but not a doubt. She definitely got me the hookup. Right. Oh! <laughs> 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 Crazy, right? <laughs> Gary. Rich. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go, Joyce. <laughs> no, man, you know, seriously, man. Seriously, man, bro. I'm going to tell you, but when opportunity is not, you need to take that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I because. I'm going to take yes, that advice. Yes, yeah. Because uh, ain't going to keep knocking, baby. You're right about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I, I still would like to know what's what is it about um, uh, the, uh, what we hear here in the, uh, in, the in the United States. Uh, it's the money issue. It's yeah. oh, you got to fill seats. Uh, blah blah. Oh, you're yeah, not on the big board. Best, or, best. Or, but then the other countries they look yeah. and go, oh, you're great, and we will pay you, and we will pay you well. And you they don't mind paying you. That's the whole key. They don't well, mind paying you. They it's, do well, not well, mind I'm, paying you. So you, it's not about the money then. So what is it? And you but well, I, I, go ahead, go ahead, Glenn. I, I tell I tell you what I tell you one other thing I believe it is too, and the simple fact that they 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 are they are extremely open to new ideas. Mm-hmm. You know? They they don't they don't care. I mean you your music can be great, but they like this music too. That music gonna be great, but they like this music too. They don't they don't just pick one genre, pick it like, this is the greatest genre in the this is a, they don't do that. They don't. They go across the board, and they and they and they 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 they're willing to lend an ear to everybody's creativity. Mm-hmm. That's what that, that's what I've that's what I've, uh, I've grown to understand about them. Mm-hmm. For number one, and for number two, another thing I noticed too, a lot of time they learn English quicker <laughs> from <laughs> music. From music, mm-hmm. if we make music, they can clearly understand. Mm-hmm. If we make music the words are simple yeah if you if you notice or not a lot of our music that they really love is love music if it's something slow and romantic mm-hmm. some of that english from that <laughs> some of that bump and grind yeah <laughs> look at his face oh my god did you see it? did you see that joyce did you see it? i did <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> he made that face. Oh, <laughs> you know, somebody's in jail for that. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in jail. <laughs> Dude, that's that face right there. Huh? <laughs> right. But you know, you know. On a serious note, though, it seems like everybody I've talked to over the years, you know, especially on the show and and people that's been overseas that actually perform over, they all come with the same uh same scenario i mean they say they yeah. they really do appreciate it a lot more over there they and do they really do they really do when i when i, when I was in <clears throat> germany when i was stationed in germany <clears throat> i was going to these uh, little little uh, uh 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 bars and stuff that they had over there mm-hmm. and i tell you they were put on songs and they were played over and over and over and over and it's when a man loves a woman They'll play that song over and over. Uh, uh, they'll play Sitting on Dock of the Bay over. And I'm like, man, I'm getting sick of him. And come to find out what it was is that they would learn how to speak English. Mm. They were sitting down. They would listen to the song. And some of them even come ask me, uh, this word, what does that word mean? 
Uh, what did it say? What, what does that mean? Uh, and then I'll explain it to them. They say, oh, mm -hmm. that's how to speak. A lot of them listen to that means they know how to speak, speak our language. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. That's very true. You know now, what? see, why you, though, but did you learn how to speak their language? Oh, Bishop, yeah. Bishop. It's present to Bishop to us. Shit, yeah, well. Oh, yeah. uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I'm a slob of bitch. <laughs> you know why he did that? Because he needed to show off his business. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Special Snella. It's Mr. Special Snella. It's Special Bitch. See that? <laughs> well, you know, that music back then, we used to call it soul music. Exactly. Because it was music from right. your soul. It, it, exactly. and, and no matter what country you're from, it's it's quite appealing because it it ministers to your soul. Oh, mm -hmm. Exactly. It's yeah, exactly. when a man loves a woman, ah, yes. who the man yes. doesn't know about that? I, I'm I'm telling you. Sing it. It's a big, big. See if he had done it opera style, it would have been too rigid. Yes. But to sing it from his soul, at uh, yes. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And it's, I it's, think that people love that. I'm sorry. I, go ahead, Glenn. I mean, could 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 just, could just look at look at a. Uh, Look at what what does Rolling Stone them tell you when they when they when they say well, who inspired them? Uh, 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 people like Muddy Waters, yeah. people like uh, uh, people like Chuck Berry, mm -hmm. those kind of guys. So those guys sing that they sing that old blues. They sing that that gut wrenching mm -hmm. stuff. That you can feel, just like you just said, they feel it in their soul. Yes, right. Yeah. Hey hey hey, I, I don't know if I should say this or not. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Look out. <laughs> but I think. I, Beware, you know, beware. Talking about when a man loves a woman. It was a guy that told me, and he was out of another country, you know, with it meant to him. He said, when a man loves a woman, shit, that just makes my ice cream melt. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, really? <laughs> he told me that. No, I, got, I was surprised when he said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that kind of music here? Is this one music? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, that needs a cold shower. <laughs> Can we go to some? Can we go? Hey, hey, Glenn, you didn't know what you was getting into when you got over here. Oh, I see now. I see. Uh, you're right. Uh, uh, Oh my goodness. My, no, sister, who told me? A guy told me that. Uh, <laughs> he sure did. And, I, yeah. and he was from Cambodia. Yeah. He's from Cambodia. <laughs> Cambodia. Yeah. He used to be my neighbor across the street in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh -huh. wow. That's how he learned how to speak English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like you said, my milkshake is better than yours. I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> okay, we need a break. Oh, okay, yeah, let's man. yeah, let's do a music break. <laughs> we got rayisms now. <laughs> uh, okay, so at the beginning of the show, we did we we introduced uh, you ought to be a movie. So what I want to do, I'm going to go into uh, I can't live like this. And I might do another one right after that before we come back. But why don't you uh, uh, set that up for us, uh, uh, Glenn? Uh, I can't live like this. What what was that track all about, and how how did it all come? All 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 my all my uh, songs that I write, you know, like, <clears throat> like you know, little things that happened to me in my life. So I have to write a song about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, sure. so, so I kind of wrote this song more or less like. Uh, just being frustrated, trying to be the best person that I can be, and saying like, the more I do, the the the, the, the worst things to get, you know. And I'm like, you know, hey, I, I'm at my wit's end. I can't deal with this no more. So I just say like, you know, I can't live. I can't live like this. <laughs> I got I, I got to make a change. So that's basically what that was about. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice. Nice. We'll go ahead and and put that on, and uh, everybody. So check it out, and then we'll be back right here on the Indie Lot Spot. Y'all keep it locked right here.
Cause I'm really, really, really in love with you But I can't live like this And I can't love you like this And yes, true love is hard to resist But it's true love I surely will miss, girl I said I can't live like this And I can't love you like this And yes, true love is hard to resist
And that was some great, great music from our guest, Mr. Glenn Gordon. Man, that, GG, man, that was on fire, man. GG. <laughs> we, we, uh, we actually we, we ended with uh, High Stepping right after we played the, the other track, man. That was nice, too, that High Stepping. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got she something sounds like an ocean uh, wave in the background. Something in the background is on you, G. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It is. There it is. It was. We had. I don't know. We had this kind of a distortion, like an ocean wave or something. I hear that distortion. I'm I'm gonna still hear each other. We can still hear each other. Oh yeah, we can still hear each other. Yeah. So we can proceed. Okay, because I'm not <laughs> hearing what y'all hear, so I don't know what yeah, y'all hear. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I just, uh, Colleen, can you hear the ocean wave? Put it in the chat for us. But I can, I can, um, I can hear everybody just fine. Yes, yeah, so okay. can I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we could hear that great music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you must be excited about this music. Tell us about uh, the recording process. Who's on the album? Who helped you out producing musicians, etc.? But, but uh, the, I was I was very blessed once again. Uh, the musicians that I ran into here in Atlanta, they actually, these brothers actually playing with a black rock group when I when I met them. Uh, but they are phenomenal musicians. They're very good musicians. And uh, my guitar player had just got sent to Iraq, and the band I was with had just broke up because our band was it was only a three-piece band in the first place. It okay. was just me, the guitar player, I was playing bass, and the guitar player, and the drummer. But we were such an awesome three-piece band because all three of us sang, mm. and all three the background. And all three of us had a little character about ourselves <laughs> when right. we did a certain thing. So it was it was very quite interesting to a lot of people to see just three guys up there who played that much music <laughs> and had so much going on like that. And uh, the area that we was in, we was fortunate enough to where we had uh, groups that stopped by the club there, people coming in and visit us from bands like. Uh, I never heard of it at the time, a band called Garbage. I never heard of a band called Garbage. But actually, Garbage is some big time rock band that, okay. I, that I was told they sold nine million copies of music. Wow. I'm like, wow, I heard of Garbage. Then, then before this band that they have now, this band called Coldplay. Coldplay is a big band now. I've at heard of time, them. Yeah. Coldplay wasn't that big. <laughs> well, see, here in Atlanta, we had this, a club here in Atlanta that we had here. They call, uh, I think the club was called Echo Lounge or something like that. And they were only play international artists. So so, so anybody who's coming from, a, 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 from out of the country would always perform at that club. And they would come and they would hear us playing next door to them. Cause we were just kind of like a catty corner across the street. And they would hear all that music from just that one little three piece band. They were like, oh man, we gotta go, gotta go on and check it out. So they're going to check us out. And, uh, the other guy uh, came over was Outcast. Outcast used to come over mm -hmm. to the little garage, uh, 3,000. He came over to Andre 3,000. So we do all that kind of stuff. So all this kind of stuff kind of led into us uh, keeping things going after the band had fell apart because of because of the uh, guitar player had gone. So my guy, the, the two uh, guys I got from the Black Rock Group, well, you used to playing a lot of funk music and stuff. So we was a compliment to each other. When I brought them in, started teaching them what I was doing, which we gave them another level to their repertoire. And uh, it worked out It worked out wonderful. Matter of fact, the, the guitar player that used to play with us now, he's playing with a, he playing with a Stevie Wonder cover band now. Hmm. So, uh, so, I mean, he's just that good. I mean, this this guy is just awesome. He's what are awesome. their names? Give him a shout out. Oh yes, his, his name is Juan Mitchell, but we call him Wiz, and we call him Wiz because he is Wiz. I mean, he's weird. I mean, this guy can play. Oh my God, he can play off the chain. And then, in my drummer, I got a drummer name. We call him T Man, but his name is Tommy Johnson. Tommy mm -hmm. Johnson, he actually can play a little sax, a little bit of bass, uh, mm -hmm. he can rap. 
He can sing. He can hype the crowd. He's like when Gene Brown's like he got his his sad man Basil. I got T Man. T Man is my hype man. T Man, you know, me and T Man is like like two peas in a pod. I mean, if they, if they was to bring me to Japan or any play right right now, say GG Willis want you. I'm not going no place without T Man. I got I got to have T Man with me. That's 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 my right hand man. Nice. So these musicians played on uh, on those tracks we heard, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, T-Man played the drums and background vocal. Uh, uh, Wiz played both guitar parts. Uh, I, I, I recorded that CD originally in a, a studio here in Atlanta named Earth Shaking Music. They're still in, they're still in existence. Uh, the gentleman who owned the club, I mean, owned this, uh, 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 the uh, music store named uh, Dave. Okay. Dave played they play the percussions in it. So, so he, he owns the studio, but he's a, he's a good percussionist player too. Dave was one of my biggest supporters of all time too. Dave, Dave came on board and supported me when nobody else did. He, he came on and came on board and uh, let me record it in the studio and, and gave me my sound recording rights and everything because the problem was I had other studios I was thinking about going to, but none of them wanted to give me my sound recording rights. And that's a lesson that I wanted to share with everybody out there right now. I don't understand that. If, if you, what if, do you think? The CDs, these, these, these so-called guys right now, you got to be very careful when you go to these guys who got these little homemade studios. And uh -huh. got, their, got their little studios in their mom and dad bedroom or bathroom or something like that. They done learn enough about the business to know if they record your material and, and give it to you but never give you a sound recording contract, they still own the rights to your sound recording. They're smart enough to know that now. So, okay. so anybody can get you in their anybody can get you in their bedroom or their bathroom someplace and put a mic in front of you with a little recorder. He's gonna own he or she gonna own your sound recording if you don't get a sound recording contract. Because filing your music with the copyright office is one thing. When you file on what you call underlying work, it's not commercially sound. Mm -hmm. So you file it with the copyright office. But now you wanna get it commercially sound. Sound see that's probably that's probably Prince had with Warner Brothers. Okay. Warner Brothers well, Warner Brothers wanted to give him his music back, but they didn't want to give him the sound recording rights. Mm -hmm. So, so that would screw up a lot of these artists when you. So you don't have to be dealing with a major label to get screwed around. Oh, so that what, what I'm going to tell you: be careful dealing with, be careful dealing with all these people who got these little homemade studios at their house. Talking about they're going to record you. They just want to do a friend a favor. Be careful with that, because if you do go in there and do that, you better make sure you got a sound recording contract. To let them know once this project is done that you own all the rights to your project, including all the sound recording. If you don't, when you get ready to file a sound a sound recording contract with the copyright office, they're gonna ask you how you came how you came and control how you came ownership of this work. If you can't say by way of document, uh, you can't say that uh, by work made for hire, then you don't own the sound recording rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. I don't care if you spend a million dollars for the sound recording. You still don't own it if you don't have a contract stating that it's yours. Mm -hmm. So it's just very important to get that business mm -hmm. business done before you do the work. Yeah, you know, especially dealing, hey. dealing with folks. You know, that especially if you're not, you know, if you guys are not trust trustworthy. Um, yeah, you don't know the person. You know what I mean? That's I mean, look, look look what Taylor Swift That's did. Hard. Look what Taylor Swift did. Taylor Swift went back in the studio and recorded all her stuff. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift said, forget you guys. I'm not going to fight y'all for my sound recording rights. I'll just go back and redo it. That's yeah. what she did. Another, another example. Another, okay. Yeah, and another example is uh, Shanti. Uh, you know, she's kind of fighting with, uh, you know, whenever she left. Um, uh, what's, what was it? Uh, oh, I Warner Brothers? No, well, so I don't know the label, but the, okay. the actual, um, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Gotti? You remember, uh, I can't even think, it's a hip hop uh, guy that ended up, they got in some trouble. And then, okay. I don't know if you know Ashanti, and uh, she used to sing with uh, uh, R&B mm -hmm. stuff, but she always sung with rappers. And you know, right. she always had, and well, the Gotti guy, I guess whenever he got in trouble, they uh, end up, you know, she ended up just disbanding herself from them. And Ja Ru, I think he ended up uh, so I don't know what happened to Ja Rue, but anyway, he he left too. But something happened where that whole 
deal broke up and they had all those right. songs recorded and stuff right. mm-hmm. and uh but now she's right now in the process of re recording those same songs because okay. she wants to have the rights to all of that and they're fighting you know back and forth because mm. it's a mess but i mean see, a lot of, see, a lot of time a lot of time when stuff come off like that a lot of time a, a lot of them was co-writers uh, yes so they might have been co-writers on stuff but the thing of it is if you are co-writers <clears throat> that's not saying that you can't re- re-record it mm-hmm. but you got also recognize and give all those other writers their rights to it as well yeah. because you are writers but mm-hmm. see but then but then sometimes people been co-writers but when they file a paperwork with the copyright office they didn't put, they didn't include your name right <laughs> so, yeah so that's, that's you true get, that wall comes in there. yeah that's right <laughs> gia irv Gotti. irv Gotti is that's what i was trying to think I yeah that's why the contract comes in they might have done it with the copyright office but if you yeah. haven't but i had to explain that to a guy uh so I've been doing this a long time, Joyce. I know what I'm doing, and I've done it. Not, and I, I tried to tell him, you, you got so and so writing with you. He's a co-writer. Yeah. Yes, Unless you get a contract, a work for hire, or what have you. And he was like, No, Joyce, no. And he wanted me to write the horn parts, and I said, I'm a co-writer. Exactly. And, and he was like. No, no, no! You're not a co-writer. Mm. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know, the thing is that, as as indie artists, that's why I try to keep my circle tight, who I deal with. Right. Because even if I know I'm a co-writer, I'm not going to go after my friends. No. You can do that if you want to. Yes, you can. But you can. You may. Uh, you may give yourself a reputation. Yeah. Exactly. See, like, see, I love, I love it and like it the way we were back in the day, and that's why I'm so grateful for people like Jimmy Brown from from Brick and stuff like that. These guys are legendary guys. I mean, right? Do you, do you remember a group called the Ripple back in the day? It was a group called the Ripple. They made a song called Ola Ola. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Ripple. yeah. <laughs> a gentleman, a gentleman named Curtis Reynolds was a, uh, part of that group. Okay. Uh huh. You remember Curtis Riddle? I don't. No, I, remember, I, don't I remember the song. I remember the song yeah. that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jimmy Brown and Curtis Reynolds had teamed up together, mm-hmm. and those brothers. Oh my God! You talking about some funk? When they they got a CD out, they got a CD out just recently, oh. and they're doing a jazz. They got a jazz one too. But this is just recent. You probably gonna hit it. I think the CD is already out. I'm gonna have to check with them after our interview today because I I'm gonna have to call Jimmy on the phone and find out from him. Is it already dropped? I know it's back number two in our overseas right now. Okay. Yeah. But, they, mm-hmm. but 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 this, this thing is so pop. The, the funk is so powerful. It comes out. You, it comes at you like bam. It just hits you right in the face. It, I don't care if you paralyzed. You probably going You can move your eyelids or something. Just I mean, <laughs> that's just how. I mean, yeah. The funk is so the funk is so phenomenal. So I say, you know what thing, Gigi? Thank God you got your own little path over here, bro. Because there ain't no way in the world I can top that. These guys got some, they got one of the baddest, they're fitting to drop one of the baddest funk album I've heard in uh, in. Well, I tell you what, decades. why don't you ask him to reach out to Gary Fuston? Oh, most definitely. So we, we can have him on the show. Mm-hmm. Most de- I would, I would definitely, when I hang this phone up today, when we get off this cell, I'm going to call Jimmy and I'm going to call Curtis. Because both of those brothers had me in the studio with them. They brought me in the studio. I am so grateful to those two, but they a matter of fact, they were the ones who got me the gentleman, uh, 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 the, the the gentleman named uh, uh, Luke G, to do my. He's the, he's the one who remixed my CD for me. Okay, okay. yeah. That, that's Curtis nephew. Nice. That's Curtis nephew. Nice. And, and added his own right too now because he got some. He got music plays on. The, he got gospel music I plays every day on the radio. Mm-hmm. Nice, 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 nice. I mean, uh, these guys. These, these old school these old school guys have taught me so much. It's like you just said, Joyce. They can come after me if they wanna, but Jimmy wasn't even thinking about that. Jimmy said, "I just want to make you sound good." Mm-hmm. That's right. That's, I mean, they, Jimmy Jimmy know he can come at me anytime he yeah. wants to. But, but see, he, that's but that's the relationship that yeah. you have. Yeah, you know, Gary the, can call me. David McLaurin can call me. Terry Tuck can call me. I'm right. not going after them. You exactly. know, but but that's my circle that I know I can trust them. And that they yeah. and it's important that they trust me. But yes. I tell them all, I'll sign the contract. Yes. I don't have a problem doing it. If exactly. you know what I mean. I don't have a problem. 
But at the same time, you really need to, those relationships are so important to you. Yeah. My advice was even if somebody tells you you can, it may not be a good idea for you to do that. You need it's those a, relationships. You got, you got to know who you're talking to. Because cause like you said, like, I mean, when I went over, when I went over to Jimmy's, when I went over to Luke, uh, to Luke G House to get my stuff recorded, he ain't had no problem with no contract. He just went and signed, him and his wife, that's signed right away because why? Right. That's, that's Curtis' nephew. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, so, I don't so, so, have a problem with it either. So I he know, all the time. So he know what it was, you know? I mean, it's just like, and like as you just said, Joyce, you got to have that relationship because yeah. my, my publicist, my publicist was right now. I mean, she hadn't promised me anything. And promise me, but my cup, my publicist Desiree told me. She said, "I'm gonna try to get you. I'm gonna try to get you uh, introduced to to Felton. You know, Felton Black with Big Confunction. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, "I'm gonna try. She, she said, I'm gonna try to get. I'm gonna try to get you introduced to Felton. She said because you got some nice music here. She said, "I think Felton might like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and I got some. Other, this come from relationship. Sure. It's relationship. You know, I, 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 God knows I got the best publicists out there." <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice for you to, uh, you know, uh, give us some accolades too. Yeah. That people oh, she, much she appreciate. Does. Absolutely. And that's okay. funny. You know, I just, a friend of ours, uh, he's a comedian, and you might know him. His uh, name is uh, Jay Lamont. But uh, <laughs> but he does, you know, he, he, he does music too. But he also, you know, he hosts a lot of old school band shows and things like that and i know last night that we were speaking being that we we're just speaking about confunction uh there was he posted last night um the show that uh uh there was a show that confunction was on in lakeside and i think somebody yeah. else but I, I got to see a clip of confunction and confunction man they were tight yes they were bro all the yes. horns and everything it was just like oh my <laughs> But, but but then but then see I love watching those kind of bands when you because you know the first thing I do when I watch them kind of band the very first thing I do George the first thing I do I start this one two three four five six I start counting you can't have that kind of sound if you ain't got that if you ain't got the personnel yeah you know I mean you can go you can go put some stuff in computers and and, and record stuff. But I like to have the live musician because that live musician is gonna give you their personal feel. That's why certain times you got these albums that got different players on. Mm -hmm. This 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 musician here, he got that kind of feel. This musician here, he's got that kind of feel. You know, I I want to I want to feel your spirit in my music. I don't I don't catch all that program. I want to feel your spirit in my music. And when I look at when I look at the guy, Confunction might be <coughs> nine or ten players. F one five, it might be eleven players. Commodores over here. They might have seven, eight, nine, ten. You got to have the, you got to have the ammunition there to put at that kind of sound. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. I want to get that kind of sound behind me. That's why I say when I get the, you my friend. I'm gonna get me that ten or twelve piece band. I'm telling you. I know that's right. Okay, you know, I didn't know how much I missed that until uh, my friend. I call her my little sister, Lala Johnson. She's the background singer for Erica Badu. When she called me years ago, I got a dream of an all-female Tina Turner tribute band. Well, fast forward, we did our first show in 2019. Right. Four-piece, all-female horn section, female bass, female lead guitar. Mm -hmm. The Tinets, of course, they're all female. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did three shows this year, and my husband was in the audience. He's, uh, we start, we do everything Tina does. You know, she does the instrumental intro thing. Exactly. And we hit the first note and my husband said, you should have seen the audience. They were blown away because we came with such, you know, such force, power. That's the word. Right. And the drummer, she's like five feet <laughs> and she can play the heck out of those drums. Oh, she's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. And being all 12 people on the stage, all female and uh, except the teenettes, our, our our uniform is a black suit with a tie and a high up ponytail and we're all up there and we come up with that power so her dream she's talking to somebody in vegas now and in canada uh but she wants to take it on the road and she's phenomenal she's phenomenal singer uh, y'all should y'all should do it my sisters y'all should do it George. she's because, trying you know, it's so it's so hard do, do what you I mean I'm sorry. you're doing what you're doing what you you're doing what you love. 
See, right. that's why. That's why I said if I had to do this all over again, mm -hmm. if I had to do this all over again, and if it means that I have to be homeless three more times again, mm -hmm. then I'll be three more times again because you. I'm. Yeah. But she's going to tell you her story one day. Trust me. It's it's a story. Oh, yeah. All I can say is a story similar to yours. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. But I'm going to let her tell her own story. As a matter of fact, I want her to come on the show as well. She said she would. But uh, but her struggle, but to put 12 women together, she said they told her that won't work 12 women together. <laughs> we showed them, didn't we? <laughs> Beyonce came through here one time with an all women show and good night. I mean, she was throwing down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And her <laughs> Don't oh tell me. Yeah. Well, tell me they can get no instruments about you. Yeah. I'm scary trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to break in. I'm, I want to take another music break. And I also, I okay. was going to uh, relay a message for Colleen because Colleen said that uh, somebody needed to rake way up, but his phone woke him up. <laughs> <laughs> that was my seat. I told him about eating those brownies before the show. <laughs> you know, uh, you know where that call come from? Was it was it Keith? Was it Keith? That call came from Afro. Oh, it came from Afro. Okay, my bad. Well, uh, that's Jessica. <clears throat> I call you. You said the best. Oh, it just called you out from Africa that you would sleep. <laughs> what? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, she's laughing. She's laughing. She's laughing. She said, LOL, LOL, emojis, a bunch of them. Ray sleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's struggling today, boy. He is struggling. <laughs> I sleep. Here you are. I told him, don't eat those brownies before the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> Colleen, I was going to relay the message, and the phone went off, and I saw him popped up. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, let's take another short music okay. break. We're going to play some more of uh, uh, Gigi's music, and then we'll come right back, okay? okay? So uh, keep it locked right here, y'all. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> With a woke Ray Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well 
ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and you just got through hearing some more great, great, great music from our guest, Mr. Glenn Gordon, A.K.K. A.K.A. G.G. Yes, sir. Yeah, G.G. Call me G.G. for 50 years. Yeah. So we're not the original. I'm sorry. I always said it. They have the two G's on both of them. <laughs> uh, I love the comment uh, Colleen made in the chat Can I read it to you? Uh, Gigi She mm-hmm. said It has been an honor to share Glenn's music And all my music groups And more The response has been overwhelming Oh my goodness I am so, Thank you, you so much Colleen <laughs> Thank you so very much I mean you, believe it or not Me and Colleen The first time we had hooked up with each other online it was late at night. I guarantee you, if I'm, if I'm lying about it, since she's in the chat room, she probably didn't correct me. But I think we spoke for at least about three or four hours. The mm-hmm. first, very first time. Wow. Three, I mean, that that's just how much, that's just how, much, that's just how humble she is and mm-hmm. reaching out to help you. Yeah. Oh, is. and Henry said, loving Deuces Wild, Glenn Gordon. He's loving uh, that song. So... Anyway, that was Henry Mixon, and he's also an indie artist as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. This, this, this is the greatest time for indie artists. This is the greatest time for them. I mean, I just read some stuff the other day online where the, where the artists are upset that when their music are being screaming out there, when their music being screaming and stuff out there, they're saying that they sold, say, probably about millions of, so they sell several million copies, and they get out of seven million copies, they're making something like about uh, 5,000 something dollars i sell a million copies mm-hmm. but that's because they're on major labels and major labels all that money goes to the majors mm-hmm. because most of your money being made from the publishing not from the copyright but from the right publishing. From the publishing mm-hmm. that's where most money is made yeah. when right. you're on those labels you're saying i own my copyright i should make more money than that no you need to own your publishing too mm-hmm. and if you don't if you don't own at least if you don't own all your publishing you need to own at least forty nine percent of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You need to own at least forty nine. Exactly. If you own at least forty nine percent of your publishing, if you're only getting paid from copyrights, if it's a hard copy song, less than five minutes, you may you may be getting about ten cents a copy, if mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And if it's streaming on Spotify, you get point mm-hmm. oh three three three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think one of them is that like something like. Point, uh, zero point zero zero three or something like that. One, yeah, one like, yeah. yeah one, one was, and another one was about like uh, zero point zero zero four or something. <laughs> you know, some, but, but the thing yeah. of it is though, but the thing of it is though, there's no excuse. There's no excuse why 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 any artist is not in control of his own publishing. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Why are you not in control of your own publishing? Yeah, yeah you can need to be. Definitely need to you know, be. You, 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 don't even, you don't even need a physical copy to own your publishing. You put it online. Go to the studio and record it and do a sound recording on it and put it online. Mm-hmm. So they, so, so, so major labels was, was eating you up by saying marketing and making physical product. Yeah. Well, if you selling physical product, you just sell online and letting them scream it. Why are you <laughs> not, a, not in ownership of your publishing? I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a quick note to Ray. Uh, Henry said, "Ray finally awake." Yeah. <laughs> I don't really hear him. But read what Marilyn said. He got a compliment. He Uh-oh. got a compliment. Let's it's see. the last comment. Okay, Marilyn says, "I want to say that Ray was a great host to me last weekend. We had a great time, and he did not go to sleep." <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, uh, YJ, oh, let me say this. YJ want to say that, uh, you know, she enjoyed being on the, you know, the other day. Anyway, she's uh, said hi to everybody because she's over in Scotland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell her we mm-hmm. said hello. She's yeah. going home. Yeah, I talked to her. Matter of fact, uh, yesterday morning, I talked to her. All right. Okay. Yeah, she did everything going well. Yeah. 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 Awesome. But yeah, Glenn, man, boy, I tell you, it was, that music is great, man. I really enjoyed it. In fact, we just got through coming off of the, uh, that Deuces uh, Wild, and then right before that, we, um, 
we actually played the one uh you're my first you're my last it had that kind of reggae <laughs> flavor to it i like that yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I tell you and like as i said you know i don't i don't really set out to make a song in a, in a certain style of genre i just do what i feel mm -hmm. i feel like that it just comes out like that i, I don't intentionally try to make it like that but I, like i said I, 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 I know I've said it about a hundred times, but I'll say it again. I am so grateful to Jimmy Brown from the old school band Brick for beating it in my head. I need to stay with it. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, Brown, Jimmy Brown said, man, what's wrong with you? Get your butt on out there and do your music, man. What, what, what's, what's wrong with you? What, why, I'm older than you is, and I'm still doing it. That's what he told me. Yeah. And, Good for Jimmy. And, 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 and with you, and with you hear him and Jimmy, with you hear him and Curtis uh, uh, Reynolds, CD they got it there. Oh, it's gonna blow your mind. Ooh, I can't yeah. wait. I bet it oh, is. Oh, it's gonna blow your mind. And they were both with Brick, right? No, no, no. Jimmy no was, Jimmy oh, was the lead singer, lead singer, and, and, and multi horn player with Brick. But uh, but uh, uh, Curtis, he's with the band called Ripple. He's a keyboard player. Okay. Yeah, keyboard, keyboard and vocals. One is Brick. You said Ripple. Yeah, the band. Oh, well, they took the name out to the wine ripple. <laughs> Remember that? Fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Give me some ripple. <laughs> Got me thinking about Red yeah. Fox now. <laughs> yeah, that's where, yeah. <laughs> that's it. All, 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 all our song was so popular, though. Black Eyed Peas just, just recently redone. Oh, they oh, did. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Ola Ola, oh, that's that's a very popular song. Oh yeah, very, yeah, it's very popular. Yeah, yeah, I, that song, that song, that song was re-recorded many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Very like true. I said, I learned, I learned so much from the old school cats. You know, they 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 taught me a lot. You know, and and uh, and they and they really try to encourage me to do stuff with longevity, which 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 I appreciate. You know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. do stuff. Do stuff that's gonna outlast you. You know, you know, you got you got songs. <laughs> out here, you got songs out here. You know, like <laughs> you put, you put a song out, and, and and six months from now they say, "Gigi who? who? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did they do? What 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 what, what a song? They, see, I, I make. See, believe it or not, the first recording of my music that first that that, that CD came out in two thousand five. First time it was recorded. Mm -hmm. I went back and re-recorded it. I went back and re-recorded it because Jimmy and them told me, Jimmy Brown and them told me, and a lot of other cats told me, said, look, man, you got instrumental tracks on your CD, that's, which is good. Mm -hmm. But what you have on your CD, what they call performance tracks. And, you, and, the, and the performance tracks mean that you need to have all your background, you need to have everything in there. So when you go to perform someplace, you know, and, you know, and, they're, not, and they're not requesting your full band, mm -hmm. You got your performance tracks, so that's what I have on my CD. Now I have performance tracks. Absolutely, very good. And speaking of, since uh, we're almost getting close to downtown, uh, tell everybody, Glenn, where they can follow you and how they can keep up with you uh, and buy you and purchase your music and stuff. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I am on every major music platform that you can think of. I'm on. I'm on major. I'm on major music platforms. I'm on platforms that I didn't even know anything about. But I'm on all these music music platforms. But at the same time, from the grace of God, my coworkers who work with me, they had encouraged me to make my own website. And they said, "Gigi, we want to support you directly." Mm -hmm. So if you, right. you go to www. Two G's G G S and the word music. Dot com. You go to that take you directly to my website. So it's just www.ggsmusic.com. My coworkers told me, said, "Look, we want to we want to support you directly. So start to so create your own website." And I was fortunate enough to find a young lady who could put one together for me. Perfect. So if you tomorrow is my birthday, so if you want to give me a big present, hey. thank you very much. So if you want to give me a big present. Please go and purchase my CD for my birthday. All right, my Virgo That's brother. Right. <laughs> tomorrow, That's right. I will be 37 years old tomorrow. Oh, mm, shit. I'm 35. <laughs> 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 Well, big a big shout out birthday to you, my brother. That's you. Yes. You right in my you right in my world. I just had my birthday uh, on the sixth, so we Virgos, oh, man. Yes, fellow Virgo. Yes. 
Hey, hey, you got it going on, brother. Hey. Going on. <laughs> the Virgo's cool now. That's right. Hold it. That's Hold right. It. Hold it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Don't, don't start. Let's, it, we only have, what, seven minutes left? <laughs> I'm an Aquarius, boy. And I tell you, I'm so sharp as crazy. <laughs> oh, uh, crazy. <laughs> dang. All right. Well, man. <laughs> to allow me to have this much fun because because like i said i'm just old country boy i can tell you, i'm just a little old country boy i'm from my hometown i got population 512 people that's, oh, that's wow. the whole town police the firefighters and the people who work to do it work the the, the, the the streets so you have 512 people in my hometown but hey we all yeah, know each other from your house right because you said there were 10 siblings all together <laughs> there, were, there, were, there, were, there were 10 siblings in the house but right now we got the population in five twelve, so about half of them are my relatives, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, 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 so we we are, you know, we 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 a close knit family, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I, I I picked it up right off the bat as soon as he opened his mouth. I said, "Boy, you from the Southern boys." That's what he told me. You can talk about. See, I'm not too far from Charlemagne the God. Is that the call, Charlemagne the God? Yeah, Charlemagne. Yeah. Yeah, me 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 and him not too far from each other. You know, he down in Moss Corner and Goose Creek. Oh, okay. Uh, Hemingway, but you see that whole borderline down in there up to Savannah, Georgia. They call that. They call it Geechee territory. All that Geechee territory. Huh? You know, so, so, you know, oh, yeah, now we can throw that one in. I can tell you something about your mom. I can tell you something. You don't even know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I already know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Geechee, he can't talk about nobody's accent. Everybody here, we can't, we are, we are a country. <laughs> I'm South Louisiana, so you mm. know. <laughs> I'm Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma, but I got a whole bunch of city in there. Uh, uh, Henry Turner. Henry Turner <laughs> Baton Rouge is a good friend of mine. Who? Henry Turner down Baton Rouge. Henry, oh. Henry, yeah, Henry Turner, man. He's, that's a cool brother, man. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, All Gary. Right. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. I just want to... Uh, yeah. Tell uh, Glenn, man, thank you, man, for coming by, hanging out with us. We really enjoyed having you today. Come on, man. Really, uh, really did. I, I appreciate you so much for giving me this opportunity. Oh yeah, anytime, brother. And uh, we're gonna keep supporting your music over here, and uh, and we look forward again to have you come back. You know, you can kind of update yeah. us on some things, because I know you're gonna right. be doing a lot of a lot of things you, since you're in it now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I'm just very fortunate. Someone pulled my coattail one day and said, "Hey, man, go mm -hmm. do some of that work on the scenes over there." Mm -hmm. And I'm. And I was like, "It is in closing. You have no reason to still be a starving musician. Go out there and learn how to get behind the scenes and support yourself mm -hmm. and get on out of here." That's right. That's right. Preach. Preach it. Preach <laughs> it. Okay. Well, Joyce and Ray, y'all want y'all have y'all last words for this week before we. Uh, <laughs> In this thing. The doors of the church are now open. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> My brother just preached, so I had to say something. <laughs> but I just want to give a quick shout out. Hopefully, I got everybody's name to thank you for being here in the chat. Mm -hmm. Even if you weren't in the chat, thank you for listening. But in the chat room, we have our, our, our Colleen Keithley. Thanks. Uh, Joel uh, Crofton, Gia Hyatt. Mm -hmm. She's another regular, y'all. She's always here to support us. Thank yeah, you, Gia. We thank you. Uh, Marilyn Ford, uh, thank you, Mac, for taking care of, of Marilyn because Keith would, would get you if he didn't. But anyway. <laughs> 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 and and uh, Jazzy was in the house with uh, from K Ward Radio. Yeah, uh, Jazzy. Hey, thank you, Jazzy, for keeping my song on your playlist. Yeah, appreciate me too. You. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, Keith Gilcrest, also uh, our radio host, a radio personality. Yeah. And the house, thank you for keeping our music on your yeah, show. Absolutely. That's our brother. Uh, 
Yes, and and Jessica Single from Africa, thanks for waking Mac up. Yeah, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and your awesome, your awesome, awesome publicist, uh, Desiree Benson. Yeah. Yes. And Shout appreciate out. your support. And last but certainly not least, another weekly supporter in the chat is Henry Mixon. Who is also an, an, an indie artist with some beautiful music out there, as, at, out there as well. And to you, Gigi, man, we just enjoyed you. I love your personality. Thank I you love so your much. Positive energy. You yes. know, of course, you, your, your vocals, your talent, your music, everything is just wonderful. But it, you can cancel it out with a bad, with a bad personality or you know, bad, you know what I mean, attitude. Is what right. I say. You can cancel all that out, but you just made it even better. And I love the way you take care of people and try to encourage uh, indie artists to, uh, you know, to do better, to uh, support their craft. So I appreciate you so much. And when you go to Japan, don't take Mac. Take me. He can't play. <laughs> <laughs> My brother can't even tap for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but in all, on a serious note, like Gary said, appreciate you, brother. And those in the chat, please click the thumbs up if you like the show. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please share uh, our future shows on your on your um, on your uh, social media so we so we can continue to build the listeners here. Okay. Yeah, I still wait for that birthday gift. <laughs> I know, right? What is it? GGSmusic.com. GGSmusic.com. Go there mm. and, and, yes. and uh, buy his music. Thank you so very much. I, I had nothing but absolute fun here today. <laughs> oh, well, you have to come back. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sitting waiting on ready anytime you need me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying. I, I already know you weren't expecting none of this. <laughs> now you right about that, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were about the prize. <laughs> ah. But hey, but, uh, 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 GJ, it was our pleasure, you know, having you on the show today. You know, and uh, Thank you, hey, man, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, and you. definitely, definitely. You, you need to take your butt over to Japan. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do that. Don't I'm procrastinating on that. I'm taking you up on that, Mike. You, you, you're so very right, Mike. I'm going to take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, I hope you do. And uh, yeah. Joy said, I can't play a daggum thing, but I can damn sure sing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't heard me, but I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just hear him? Uh, not that noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Look, I'll be your BG, your background singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is, you know, it was really a pleasure having you on the show. I know it. I had some fun. Thank you, brother. I so about that. Even though but, you had a couple of little wink, winkies out, <laughs> you napped out a little bit. <laughs> I don't keep saying I was seeing my eyes made better because I was just checking for cracks. <laughs> I told you about that crack. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> let's, right, let's get on. Honest, all of that. <laughs> well, let's get on. Out hey, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs> all right. Everybody, we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Gigi. Oh, oh, and before we we head out, uh, Joyce, tell us who we're gonna have next week. Her name is Tony Lashawn. She's gonna be our guest next week, and she's got a, a, a video out and some really good music that is uh, mostly inspirational but upbeat and contemporary. So you're gonna enjoy. It. So tell somebody yeah. to show up next week. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay, everybody. Have a great weekend. Be safe. And we'll see you next week right here on the Indie Live Spot. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, man. This is absolutely wonderful. I, I
You are listening to GHP Radio, powered by iTrackRadio.com, your independent music source. Fresh, new music, right here on the all-new GHP Radio. Radio. 